Guys, job numbers are weird right now with the potential look that people are still getting employed, but the labor market might be softening. But also at the same time, manufacturing is contracting. Things are just chaos right now. No one knows what the Fed is going to do. We need to talk about it. This is your week in money. The United States economy added 142,000 jobs in August of this year, showing a rebound from the weaker job growth earlier in the summer. Is that what we're looking for? I'm not 100% sure. It really depends on who you ask. Obviously, from our personal level, we all want to see good job growth because we don't want people to suffer with not having jobs. But at the same time, what we're looking for when it comes to interest rate hikes are weaker jobs being added essentially because it would show that the economy is growing slower meaning that the federal reserve is more inclined to maybe drop interest rates by double of what we expected with a job report coming in like this probably to see a quarter point cut this month instead of the 0.5 that people are asking for but again a good jobs report shows that people are getting jobs and who are we if we're saying that we don't want people to get jobs it's a really weird contradiction in the world of economics in terms of what we want and also just being decent people. But this uptick follows a significant revision of the June and July data, which lowered job growth estimates by a combined 86,000 jobs. Now the unemployment rate drops slightly to 4.2% in August, which is signaling a cooling labor market potentially. And then when it comes to that revised data for June and July, the labor market revised down its initial estimates. And this is indicating that hiring was actually weaker than previously thought. This reinforcing concerns about the strength of the labor market during the summer. But again, with this report, who even knows where we're at right now? And obviously, like I already mentioned, the big question, the big topic right now is the Federal Reserve in rate cuts this month. It's been four years and the Federal Reserve is expected to begin a series of rate cuts this month, but the size of the initial cut is uncertain. John Williams, president of the New York Fed, signaled that while rate cuts are coming, there is no urgent need for a large cut and the reduction would be likely gradual. Investors were hoping for more clarity on whether the Fed would opt for a quarter point or a half point cut in rates. The August jobs report did not indicate a strong enough weakness in the economy to put for a larger cut. It did confirm a cooling labor market. So again, contradictions. It's interesting to see what happens and we'll obviously cover it this month. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, the economic sectors that were leading job growth in the most recent month were construction and healthcare, but other sectors were showing slower hiring. Now, the labor force participation rate remained stable as year over year wage gains ticked up to 3.8%, indicating moderate wage growth amidst the broader economic slowdown. But the market reaction, man, the market reaction was honestly, I've talked to a lot of people that are really obsessed with overall intraday trading and people think that the markets is going to be going sideways for a little while and even with a big drop like we saw yesterday which hurts us all it still kind of does align with that because we've been seeing down up and now down again but is it going to go lower than it did a few weeks ago that's the question it's just looking like wall street is remaining cautious with ongoing uncertainty about the size of the future rate cuts and then there's broader economic deceleration and economists and analysts are assessing whether the slowdown in summer is reflecting a temporary shock such as the impact of hurricane barrel or a more significant economic deceleration. The volatility in the labor market and broader economic activity is being closely watched as the Federal Reserve navigates its response. And then the response in the stock market is only following the uncertainty there. But with the first debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump coming up this next week, a lot of voters show in polling that economic concerns are the number one priority for most voters. And economic conditions, especially job growth and wage stagnation, are shaping up to be a major player in the presidential campaign. Kamala Harris, the Democratic candidate, is pitching the continuation of President Biden's economic policies, where Donald Trump, the GOP nominee, is emphasizing a return to his pre-pandemic economy, framing the current economic slowdown as a key issue in the election. But when talking about these job reports, unemployment numbers, and whether or not the Federal Reserve is going to cut slightly or cut more or not cut at all, it's important to look at historical context. Let's look at pre-2023 trends. In 2022 and early 2023, job growth was robust, with an 
average monthly job gain of around 242,000 jobs. The unemployment was consistently low and wage growth was strong. However, inflation was also high, leading the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates to curb spending and cool the economy. Now, mid-2023 to 2024, job growth began to decelerate as the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes took effect, reducing borrowing and spending. By middle of 2023, job creation had slowed to around 179,000 jobs per month below expectations. And this caused concerns about a potential economic slowdown. Now, when it comes to inflation versus employment, there are obviously inflationary pressures first. Throughout 2022, high inflation was the Fed's main focus. With rising prices and wage pressures, the Federal Reserve kept raising rates, which slowed down job growth, but did not lead to widespread layoffs just yet. The Fed's policy during this period was aimed at achieving a delicate balance, cooling inflation while avoiding significant damage in the labor market. For rate cuts, the Federal Reserve has been very cautious about the timing, watching job numbers closely to avoid cutting rates too soon and destabilizing the economy further. Slower than expected job numbers in the summer of 2024 have reinforced this cautious approach. The key indicators that we're looking at now are like the number of job openings. In May 2024, job openings stayed stable around 8.1 million, which was higher than expected. And this led to some Fed officials to believe that the labor market had remained resilient despite tighter monetary policy. Then there's the unemployment rate. Even with fluctuations in monthly job growth, the unemployment rate remains relatively low, around 4.2%, suggesting a still strong labor market, but with some softening. The main thing to look at here in the consideration is the Federal Reserve's dual mandate. And this is to ensure the maximum employment and stable prices at the same time. In recent months, the labor market's cooling has allowed the Fed to consider these rate cuts as inflation has come closer to its 2% target. However, the time and size of these rate cuts are being carefully weighed against the risks of reigniting inflation again. Overall, the Fed's response to monthly job numbers is shaped by broader economic conditions, particularly inflation and employment. Now, while job growth has slowed in 2024, the Fed remains cautious in its approach to rate cuts, carefully monitoring labor market indications to avoid avoid destabilizing the economy. But there are more interesting numbers that have come out recently that might show that the United States economy is softening more than we would all like to see. And where do we see that pretty heavily? Manufacturing. The Institute for Supply Management, or ISM, reported a 47.2 expansion in manufacturing for August, which is still below the crucial 50% break-even point that separates expansion from contraction. Now, while the August figure was an improvement from 46.8% in July, it still misses expectations, which had forecasted 47.9%. Essentially, United States manufacturing remained in contraction mode for the month, indicating ongoing weakness in the sector. Demand for products is weak, and manufacturing output declined as companies hesitated to invest in capital and inventory, citing uncertainty over federal monetary policy and the upcoming election. Let's not all be doom and gloom here, shall we? Despite the manufacturing sector's contradiction, readings above 42.5% suggest the broader United States economy is still expanding. In the Again, last market's weaker than expected ISM report has led to significant market turmoil along with these job numbers and unemployment numbers and the uncertainty around what the Federal Reserve will do when it comes to cutting rates. Recently, we saw that all of this cost the S&P 500 about an 8.5% retraction, though much of those losses were eventually recovered. However, again yesterday and this week, we've seen another retraction. Well, the market's just a mess right now, likely heading sideways for a while. That would be my biggest bet, but again, we don't go off the bets we just go off of buying in on a steady basis as a full-time creator i can tell you creating engaging videos takes a lot of time and effort from scripting to editing the whole process can be a headache but that's where InVideo AI comes in. With InVideo AI, you're in the director's seat while the AI acts as your co-pilot, taking care of all the heavy lifting. InVideo AI is the world's most used AI video creator with over 10 million users in more than 150 countries. It's the only tool I found that lets you control every aspect of your video using simple text prompts. So here's how it works. To start, you enter in a detailed prompt. For example, create a YouTube short explaining what an index fund is. InVideo AI will generate a rough draft based on your input. Instead of buying individual stocks, you invest in a whole bunch at once. This spreads out your risk and 
saves you time. If you need to make changes, it's as easy as typing. You can add subtitles, change the voiceover, or even modify the intro with just a few text commands. Want to change the language to French? Done. Au lieu d'acheter des actions individuelles, vous investissez dans un ensemble d'actions à la fois. Cela vous permet de répartir vos risques et de gagner du temps. De plus, les fonds in- Need better footage for a scene? Done. It's that simple. And here's the game changer. In video AI can clone your voice. Imagine creating videos in your own voice without having to record anything. This feature alone saves you time and money, making video creation more accessible and efficient. Once you're happy with your video, you can export it without watermarks and with access to high quality stock footage. This comprehensive tool replaces the need for multiple apps, saving you hundreds of dollars each month. So if you're serious about upping your video game, try InVideo AI. Plans start at just $20 a month and you'll get access to millions of royalty-free stock footage clips, voice cloning, and more. Scan the QR code on the screen or check out the link in the description and use my code YOURWEEKINMONEY50 to get two times the number of video generation credits in your first month. But there's the inventory index as well, which increased to 50.3%, indicating some stabilization in supply levels. And the prices index nudged up to 54%, reflecting ongoing inflationary pressures, which could make the Fed more cautious about the size of future rate cuts. That being said, traders' expectations for a more aggressive half-point rate cut did rise to 39%, according to the CME Group's FedWatch measure. More on the manufacturing numbers, the S&P Global Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, another gauge of manufacturing, also showed contraction with a decline to 47.9% in August from 49.6% in July. And this report highlighted a fall in the employment index for the first time this year and a rise in input costs to a 16-month high, showing that inflationary pressures are still persisting. Chris Williamson, chief business economist at S&P Global Market Intelligence, warned that the manufacturing sector is becoming a growing drag on the economy as the third quarter progresses, and forward-looking indicators suggests this drag could intensify in the coming months. So make sure you guys stick around because we'll be talking about all these numbers as they continue to come out and we'll be hitting this platform hard when the Federal Reserve finally makes a decision on what they're gonna do. I wanna give you free money right now. I've partnered with different resources that will literally give you hundreds of dollars the moment you sign up. Check out my investing app of choice, Moomoo, where they give you up to 15 free stocks and an 8.1% interest on your uninvested cash when you sign up with my link. Would you rather have a more traditional savings account? Check out where I keep my emergency fund, SoFi, where they'll give you 4.6% on your money and up to $300 when you sign up with my link. Would you rather have automated investing? Sign up for Acorns with my link below and get $20 right now instead of the usual $5 you get from your friend's referral. And you can also sign up for our investing program and get $100 in cash deposited into your Moomoo account. This is the best way to learn your investing profile and what strategies to use based on that. All of this free money is linked in the resources section of the description below. Don't pass up this free money or I'll put you.